Hi, I'm Francoise, and I'm ready to take you on a culinary journey to several countries. So sit back, enjoy the feast, and welcome to Traveling with Francoise. Hey, wanna travel? I'll take you there, wanna dine? I'll tell you where, play golf. I'll pick the spot and I like. I know what's hot. Wanna travel? I'll take you there, wanna dine? I'll tell you where, play golf. I'll pick the spot and I like. Have you noticed that every trip we take turns into a story? Whether it's about the people, the history, the future, it's always about the food. Today we're going to the Mediterranean. And did you know that Mediterranean cuisine dates back to ancient Egypt? However, the concept that we know of today as Mediterranean cuisine dates back to only 1950. Where the Mediterranean is, along with its cuisine, can be confusing. The Mediterranean includes all of the countries that border the Mediterranean Sea. Spain, France, Italy, Greece, Turkey, Syria, Israel, Egypt, Algeria, Libya, Tunisia, and Morocco. Mediterranean cuisines often brings to mind foods such as hummus, pita, and olive oil. However, most people don't realize just how diverse Mediterranean dishes are due to its influence from a variety of regions and cultures such as Tunisian, Turkish, Lebanese, Moroccan, Egyptian, and Spanish. With French and Italian foods so well known here in America, more often than not we don't think of them as Mediterranean, even though they are. Especially Italy, which as a peninsula is virtually surrounded by the Mediterranean. There are three core ingredients that make up Mediterranean cuisine, regardless of region of influence. They are olives, wheat, and grapes. Other commonly used ingredients that round out a traditional Mediterranean meal includes fresh vegetables, meat, seafood, and spices. And with all of these wonderful dishes to choose from, they not only taste good, but they're good for us also. Taking us on this Mediterranean journey is John Sudis. He is the owner of Evzin in Palm Springs. Hi, John. Hi, how are you? Well, I am taken aback by all these beautiful dishes in front of me. I don't know anything about Mediterranean cuisine, and I don't know how much our viewers really know about Mediterranean cuisine. So please, take us on a journey through food. We have the spreads first, which is black garlic hummus, jalap cilantro jalapeno hummus, roasted beets, and Greek yogurt tzatziki. Wonderful fatouche with a mango pomegranate vinaigrettes, toasted pita chips and sunflower seeds. Okay, now when you talk about, you said fatouche? Fatouche. And what does that mean? Uh, fatouche is uh, actually a Lebanese salad, in inspired salad, which has obviously toasted pita chips. I put uh, local dates sliced. I changed a little bit of the vinaigrette dressing and I added sumac. So it just gives it a nice crispy and tangy flavor. To the salad. Okay, and one thing I wanted to ask you, John, is Mediterranean cuisine covers so many countries. Yes. And we it have does. foods here from how many different countries? Well, I try to create food or reimagine food from Mediterranean regions, starting from Lebanon, Syria, uh, Turkey, Albania, Greece, Israel. So all that region is influenced, has very similar cuisine. They, they execute dishes the same, but they all claim that they made it first. The foods that you serve here at Evzin, is it a mixture of history versus uh, a current? How do you decide on the dishes that you're going to serve? I decide on, I, I like to pick regions first. So like, for example, Dolma, right? Every single country in the Middle East and Mediterranean has them, even the Balkans. But it's, they all have different versions of it, whether it's lamb inside or just rice with lamb. I just we did a dish, just very simple. I tried to do recipes, but more modern. Mm -hmm. Not so heavy, not so rich. So I kind of try and cross boundaries between those countries. I think it's more interesting. This is an appetizer, it's halloumi. Halloumi is a Cyprian goat cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, I sear it, I top it off with Greek thyme honey, uh, local dates and toasted walnuts with rajal hanout and sumac dust. So it has that sweet, savory, salty feel to it. And with a dash of lemon, it just totally brightens up everything. It's lahmacun. Lahmacun, it's a Turkish, you know, mm -hmm. flatbread, which is done pretty much with ground lamb. Mm -hmm. And a lot of seasoning, it's a street food. Uh, I wanted to go and do it vegan. So we do the vegan flatbread, and then the I roast beets, and then I season them with lahmacun, herbs and seasonings. It's a combination of spices. 
sliced roasted eggplants, cucumber mint salad, which is kind of Israeli, and herb tahini. John, when you look at all these foods, do they bring family stories back to you? Do the gatherings or a certain dish that maybe your mother liked or your father, your brothers or your sisters, is that? There's definitely two dishes that they're very Greek and very family oriented. The rack of lamb, for sure. mm. absolutely. It's, um, it's a dish that when I came to the States, everybody was serving rack of lamb, just two or three pieces. Mm -hmm. It's, you won't find that in Greece. The, when you order a lamb, you, you order the whole rack. Yemista, that's a dish Which right here. Which is this right here? Yemista and Imam. There's the biggest fights between you know, what is Turkish and what is Greek, right, mm -hmm. in our cuisine. So I decided, well, let's put it both together in one dish, okay? Imam, which is the eggplant ratatouille vegetables roasted with some walnuts and, toast and some feta. That's definitely a Turkish dish. We use it also in Greece, we have it. And the yemista, which is the bell pepper and the tomato, stuffed with herb rice, golden raisins and pine nuts. Again, topped it off with feta. It's a Greek summer dish. There's not one single family that doesn't make at least a sheet pan of that during summer. So I put two things like Greeks and Turks together in one dish. Hopefully that will resolve any problems that we've had through history and occupation. And Good a lot of Greeks, or, yes. you know, there's, I think food should bring us together. Out of all these dishes in front of us, which dish would you say would probably be the most authentic to go back to the Mediterranean? Authentic. Authentic execution would be the rack of lamb and the mam yemista. You, that would take definitely to Mediterranean. The breads that we have here in front of us, do you see them in these beautiful baskets? They are throughout the meal that people are going to enjoy yes. these breads and these spreads throughout the meal. They use it throughout the meal like breads. So it's pita, but primarily they use it for, for the spreads or the cheese. Well, your love and passion for food exudes from you and your dishes. Just incredible here at Ev's Den in Palm Springs. So John, I want to thank you so much for having us in here. I want to thank you for sharing this Mediterranean adventure with your own influence on it. And if you're going to the Mediterranean and you want to try some foods before you go or you've been and you certainly want more, the place to come is right here at Ev's Den in Palm Springs. Really divine. I can't wait to taste it, John. Are we ready to eat? Absolutely. All Let's right. taste. Cheers. Cheers. It's time to go exploring with me, Francoise, on Traveling with Francoise. We'll travel the roads, skies, and oceans for the unusual, the fascinating, and the just plain fun right here on Fox 11. For info, visit TravelingWithFrancoise.com because it's never too late to get a life. Simple, safe, secure. Your home, your business, your life. Protected 24-7 by Command One Security. The trusted local experts. Command One Security offers fire, burglar, and medical protection with remote access for control on the go. Our competitively priced quality products use the latest technology. Get free conversion for most existing systems and three months free monitoring. No landline required. Simple, safe, secure. Command One Security. Visit us online for options and special offers. I am Fitz in the Morning and only on CV 104.3. I've got the perfect blend of music for you to start your day. You never know who's going to show up as my special guest. Join me weekday mornings. I'll see you on the radio. A1 Custom Golf Cars in Palm Desert is the Valley's leader in custom-built, street-legal lithium battery golf cars. Holding a charge much longer than conventional golf cars with no water to add, no messy acid leaks, and no maintenance. At A1, our covered lithium battery systems last 10 to 15 years delivering 60 to 100 amp hours of power. Join the new generation of street legal lithium battery powered golf car owners today only at A1 Custom Golf Cars with three locations to serve you. You can find Traveling with Francoise Thursdays at noon and Fridays at 5.30 a.m. on Fox 11. Plus every Sunday on the radio on my two-hour radio show Traveling with Francoise on Money Radio 1200 a.m. And for more information, don't forget to visit our website at travelingwithfrancoise.com. This portion of Traveling with Francoise is brought to you by Indian Ridge Country Club in Palm Desert. Love where you play. The 500 located in Palm Springs and home to Ristretto and Gallery 500. Diane Williams & Associates. Trust experience, experience trust. B. Olson's Jewelers, a family tradition, located on the lower level at the Gardens on El Paseo in Palm Desert. 
CoachellaValley.com. If it's happening, it's here at CoachellaValley.com. Okura, Robata Grill and Sushi Bar in La Quinta. O'Kane's Irish Pub in Rancho Mirage. Ebbs Inn Mediterranean Cuisine in Palm Springs. Welcome back to Traveling with Francoise. As the 12th most visited country on the planet and the fastest growing travel destination in the world, chances are you've either been or you're probably going to Japan. Asia, a term invented by the Greeks and Romans, is the Earth's largest and most populous continent, located primarily in the eastern and northern hemispheres, and is made up of seven continents and 48 countries, and covers five different regions and types of food. East Asia cuisines are primarily from Japan, China, Mongolia, and Taiwan. Food staples include rice, noodles, soybeans, and seafood, along with ingredients like rice, ginger, garlic, tofu, chilies, dried onions, soy, and sesame seeds. Today our focus is on the traditional cuisine of Japan. Since side dishes often consist of fish, pickled vegetables, and vegetables cooked in broth, Japanese cuisine, particularly sushi, has become popular throughout the world. In my search for authentic Japanese cuisine, I discovered Okura Robata Grill and Sushi Bar here in La Quinta, California. What better way to start my authentic Japanese experience than having a pre-dinner cocktail here at Okura? And guess who I found? Daniel from Pokihana. Daniel, what brings you to Okura? Hi, so Okura is just like Pokihana. Um, it's family run, and um, so you might catch me here, you might catch me over there. Now, Daniel, I see Ruben is busy behind the bar here. What's he going to be making us tonight? So Ruben's actually going to make uh, two of our favorite drinks here at Okura. Um, and one of them is called the lychee martini, and the other is our geisha girl. And these are specialty house drinks? They're our favorites. All right, come pie. Come pie. Well, Daniel, right now I am on sensory overload. What I see in front of me is so colorful and beautiful and so inviting, I don't even know where to start. Well, I'm going to try to use my chopsticks, but while I'm, I'm fumbling around with these, why don't you explain what we have in front of us? I'll go with sort of the more traditional um, dishes first. We have the regular nigiri, which is uh, the fish over the rice. And we have more of a traditional uh, sashimi here, which is raw fish that's cut without the rice. You can see here the tuna, uh, we have some salmon, we have yellowtail on this side. Depending on where you go or what you ask for, uh, they might even look a little different. Like the salmon here, you can see it's not just purely the orange color, it's got a little bit of the fatty side with the specks of white on there that you can see. It's kind of a different, more special cut, and you can ask for that from your sushi chef and they'll prepare that part for you. There's always an assortment of sushi rolls as well, and you know each place kind of has their own creation. And uh, on this side, we have the mango tango roll, and that one comes with the mango, the ahi tuna, some avocado, shrimp tempura. And on this side, we have the lemon delight, which has uh, its salmon and uh, yellowtail, and on top of it, there's a really thin slice of lemon and some tobiko on top. And you'll find these creations kind of anywhere. <laughs> I did. <it. laughs> now, am I supposed to put the sushi roll in here? Right. So you just let's put see a, take you do it because I think he's okay. going to do a little bit better All right, than yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> Dip with the soy sauce and then take a bite. It's so fresh. What are these little orange? So that's tobiko. That's actually flying fish roe. You'll see that sprinkled on top of sushi rolls quite often. Thanks to Daniel, I've experienced some incredible sushi dishes at the sushi bar and also have some fabulous authentic Japanese drinks. Now it's time for us to sample the entrees here at Akura and joining us is Jay Lee. Hi Jay. Hi Francois. Well you have a beautiful restaurant here and these dishes are just as spectacular. I'm not sure where to start, so why don't you tell us what we have in front of us. So this one is robata style shrimp. This is the soft shell crab. And this is our Asian style black cod marinated in the miso. Miso is a very popular dish in Japan. Explain exactly what miso is. Is it a soup dish? No, it's, it's actually a soy. It's fermented soy that you know we use on the sauce. And we actually create some marinade sauce 
and you know on everything that um, miso we from soup to sauce to the grill we use a variety of methods for the miso. All right, and when you talk about a robata grill, this is obvious a grill. And chef, go ahead and please make us something oh, yeah. with the grill. Oh, yes, we take out piece of meat. I didn't know that the robata grill is centuries old. In fact, it was a way for fishermen to cook on their boats without fear of fire. So if you're looking for authentic Japanese cuisine before you go to Japan or after you return, you're going to find it right here at the family owned and operated Akura in La Quinta, California. You don't want to miss it. Jay, thanks so much for having us here. It's been a delight and I can't wait to sample your dishes. Thank you, Francois, for coming to visit us again. Cheers. It's time to go exploring with me, Francoise, on Traveling with Francoise. We'll travel the roads, skies, and oceans for the unusual, the fascinating, and the just plain fun right here on Fox 11. For info, visit TravelingWithFrancoise.com because it's never too late to get a life. Simple, safe, secure. Your home, your business, your life. Protected 24-7 by Command One Security. The trusted local experts. Command One Security offers fire, burglar, and medical protection with remote access for control on the go. Our Competitively priced quality products use the latest technology. Get free conversion for most existing systems and three months free monitoring. No landline required. Simple, safe, secure. Command One Security. Visit us online for options and special offers. I'm celebrating 18 years in the Coachella Valley. I am Fitz in the Morning and only on CV 104.3. I've got the perfect blend of music for you to start your day. You never know who's going to show up as my special guest. Join me weekday mornings. I'll see you on the radio. A1 Custom Golf Cars in Palm Desert is the Valley's leader in custom-built, street-legal lithium battery golf cars. Holding a charge much longer than conventional golf cars with no water to add, no messy acid leaks, and no maintenance. At A1, our covered lithium battery systems last 10 to 15 years, delivering 60 to 100 amp hours of power. Join the new generation of street-legal lithium battery-powered golf car owners today only at A1 Custom Golf Cars with three locations to serve you. This portion of Traveling with Francoise is brought to you by Indian Ridge Country Club in Palm Desert. Love where you play. The 500 located in Palm Springs and home to Ristretto and Gallery 500. Diane Williams and Associates. Trust experience, experience, trust. B. Olson's Jewelers, a family tradition located on the lower level at the Gardens on El Paseo in Palm Desert. CoachellaValley.com. If it's happening, it's here at CoachellaValley.com. Okura, Robata Grill and Sushi Bar in La Quinta. O'Kane's Irish Pub in Rancho Mirage. Evzin Mediterranean Cuisine in Palm Springs. Welcome back to Traveling with Francoise. Ireland, and the Irish name, might be famous around the world, but it's a small country that sits beside England, Scotland, and Wales, directly above Spain and Portugal, below Iceland, and to the east of Canada, across from the Atlantic Ocean. Also known as the Emerald Isle, from the life and soul of cities like Dublin, Belfast, Galway, and Cork, to the breathtaking natural beauty of the Ring of Kerry, the wild Atlantic Way, and the Causeway Coastal Route, the 32 counties compact and bursting with history, myth, legend, culture, and as they say, something for everyone. So what is an Irish pub? The name pub actually comes from where a person went to enjoy their drink, a public house. Pubs were the working man's alternative to the private drinking establishments. There's a lot more to Irish pubs than just having a drink. Pub culture in Ireland has a very long history dating back to the 10th century, but at its core is a sense of camaraderie and friendship. For the last century, the Irish pub house has been a social and community center for people of Ireland as both a place to consume alcohol and as a place to meet friends, neighbors, and even complete strangers, and of course, to eat. Potatoes are a main staple of Irish food with traditional Irish dishes being Irish stew made with lamb, mutton, or goat, bacon and cabbage with potatoes, boxy, potato pancakes, coddle, sausage, bacon, and potato, 
or cold cannon, mashed potato, kale or cabbage, and butter, and an Ulster, the soda farl or soda bread. Feasts are celebrated in the Irish pub, from weddings, funerals, wakes, christening, and birthdays, and any other celebration you can think of. Here we are with Brenda Johnson, the owner of O'Kane's. Brenda, where did this inspiration come from? Um, from the family. Over the years, I uh, talked about it at great length with my mom. Um, our Irish heritage is on my maternal side. And uh, we had talked about it for years. My mother's dream was always to be involved with an Irish pub. And my son Mark and I are the co-owners of O'Kane's. The timing was right for us in life to, we decided if we were ever gonna do it, we're gonna do it now, or it wasn't gonna happen. And so one thing led to another and we became serious about it and um, searched for locations for a long time in the valley until we finally decided on the Rancho Mirage Marketplace. We think it's the perfect location. We're right in the center of the valley. The pub is very much in the tradition of old world charm, is what we're trying to create. Old world charm coupled with um, modern day conveniences. Well, let's talk a little bit about this. There is some heritage going on here There's, at O'Kane's. Yes, it is. And actually, the name O'Kane's came from my hours and hours of research, researching family names, my eighth generation great-grandfather was John O'Kane and he came to America in 1651. This is um, a depiction of the floral badges of the United Kingdom. The rose and the thistle and the shamrock. The rose of England, the thistle of Scotland, and the shamrock of Ireland. We had this watercolor made as we had many other items that are in the pub, uh, custom designed for us and shipped over from Ireland. So when you enter the bar, the first thing that you're going to see is a massive, massive bar that we had made. We're going to have a, a casual lounge area as well. And that's going to be an area for folks to come in and gather around. If they don't want to particularly sit at the bar, they don't want a table, they want to sit in the lounge area, they can order a drink, they can order appetizers. When I hear the word pub, I think of beer. When I hear the word Ireland, I think of lush, green, gorgeous, grassy hills. However, what I should be thinking about is the food, a variety that's so exciting it makes me want to dance the jig. Joining us now is Chef Gavin. Chef, this is a feast for the eyes. Where do we even begin? Thank you, gosh. Um, Irish food, as we know, everyone thinks Irish food is just potatoes and corned beef and cabbage. Um, but there's so much more to it, so many more rich flavors. The oceans around Ireland are uh, very, very um, fertile seas. So is the land and uh, the food represents it too. Well, a little bit your background, and these are obviously your dishes, and there's a lot of family heritage here at O'Kane's, and I know some of those recipes are brought into the menu. You have an extensive menu. With my background, it's very varied. Coming from Africa, um, Scottish heritage, lived in England, and now in Ireland, um, I try to bring all those in to modernize the uh, dishes. And uh, starting over here, we have, this is what is called a slancha salad. And slancha in um, Gaelic means health, good health health. Slancha. Slancha. So it means a healthy salad. Okay. This is a rum cured and house smoked uh, salmon. Uh -huh. And I've made, it's a play on a salmon, uh, a salad niçoise. Potatoes, beans, olives, all those good things. I love mint in there too. I love it. It Fresh looks mint. like there are little flowers in here as yes. well. These are little marigold blossoms. I love using flowers dotted throughout the food. I just think it, you know, it pops when you add a little color. This is a, a rather unique dish. Um, it's plated like sushi. Um, it looks like sushi. Uh, we've called this the shamrock and roll. It's shamrock for Ireland and then the roll, like California roll. And it's basically uh, corned beef and cabbage. Oh. So it's the cabbage that has the mashed potato and the corned beef inside. And then we have the parsley sauce that we're going to do on the rest of our menu. And that is whiskey caviar that we're making in-house. So it's mustard that's been uh, macerated in whiskey. It's lovely. It looks divine. You can get drunk on the caviar. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> well, we're going to have to wait again until afterwards. All right. all right. Now, what would come next? This is a little sandwich. In uh, The most famous thing about Ireland is uh, the farls. 
And Falls is from the northern part of Ireland where we're from, uh, Ulster, the Ulster area. And it's um, what they used to do is they would either take the soda bread and instead of baking it, they would make it as a griddle cake. And in order for it to be a fall, it has to have corners. It's something that's either laid flat and then cut. So um, I couldn't have something round. So that's what ours are going to be little squares like that. And this has got coronation chicken, which brings in the England again. Mm -hmm having me lived in London. Coronation chicken, chicken salad invented for the Queen's coronation. And it's, um, it's got almonds and fruit and curry. It's like a chicken salad sandwich. Awesome. All right, now I love potatoes. <laughs> I could eat potatoes every single day. These oh. stop me from just picking one up and putting it in my mouth. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so this is our take. It's called Shepherd Skins. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically a potato skin. And what we've done is we've taken our shepherd's pie and at Cane's we're going to be offering a lamb or a beef shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie is made with lamb and cottage pie is made with beef. But we're just calling them shepherd skins. Loads of mashed potato inside, mm. buttery mashed potato. Um, we're putting it and put a little bit of garlic in there too. Cheese and then some scallions on top and baked. I think that's going to be my favorite too. Uh, I'm tempted right now, but then there's this. Now, I know we always think of corned beef and cabbage when we talk about Irish, but bangers, that is a huge part of the Irish meal. Irish bangers, yeah. yes. We're going to offer it either just a mashed potato or cold cannon, which is a typical Irish dish. And the cold cannon is just mashed potato that has um, cabbage mixed through it. So we're going to have that and we have our bangers on top, pork sausages, loads of that rich Guinness onion gravy. And then I just finished it off with a little bit of crispy fried onions. Mm, yum, yeah. yum. And the whole point of this show is also to let people know that if they go to Ireland, they can come to O'Kane's first and try some of the dishes. Or if they come back from Ireland, they can come to O'Kane's <laughs> and, and have foods there. that they had there. So these are really all uh, traditional, traditional dishes. Yeah. Yes. I've tried to keep it um, as traditional as possible, but modernizing right. it. I definitely do want to make things that are familiar to people that right. come from Ireland or have traveled there. Mm -hmm. What yeah. do we have here? So that's called Karnachen. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's rather difficult and you have to have a few um, whiskeys or Guinnesses to, to order it at the restaurant. But uh, it's a Gaelic dessert and it's traditionally made with uh, oats, Irish oats, that's been toasted and soaked in whiskey. Oh. Um, and then you whip cream and fold it in. I'm bringing the English back into it and uh, we're going to be doing a lemon syllabub. So the le that layer there is the lemon syllabub, very light and rich. Don't get drunk on it. It too. is so good. No, I can't get drunk yet. <laughs> well, Chef, uh, thank you so much for having us here at O'Kane's. Very exciting. Let's do an Irish cheer. Slanch is what you've got to say. I don't Slauncher. know. So we're just so. Ha what do we do here? Okay. All right. So you got to say slancha. 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 Once again, we've discovered a culinary adventure in our own backyard. So be safe, eat well, and remember, it's never too late to get a life.